I have with me today uh, Dr. Michael Raj, who is currently working with Sneha Charitable Trust as Deputy Director of I Am Possible Fellowship. Of course, it spells like impossible, but he has made it to be I Am Possible. So, Dr. Raj, can you tell us something more about this I Am Possible Fellowship Program? I have been working with these kids for last 20 years. Whenever they used to come to us and talk to us, they used to always share that this is not possible for us, that is not possible, getting a good job is not possible, getting education is not possible, living healthy is not possible, lifelong we have to take medicines. So it's a very difficult life we have to go through. But there were few kids I could observe that they, whenever they came to us and we discussed is, why don't you do some education? They came forward and said, what should I do to get good education? What should I do to get good job? What should I do to be healthy? So we felt that it's a choice. Whether you think it is impossible or whether think you make it impossible, it's a choice left to you. So the whole fellowship talks about the choices we have in life, the freedom to choose, the way we want to lead our life. But we need to focus on certain things. We need to take care of our health. We need to take care of being treatment. Adherence has to be there. We need to ensure that education, we continue our education. We don't fall back our studies. Education, we don't say attaining degrees, but learning for life. What is the best you can learn for life to be hopeful and to be trustworthy? Livelihoods is an option for you, what you want to choose, but whatever you work, love the work. Be happy with the work you get. Then you can start building your career. If you don't want to start life in, with hard work, then you can never achieve. Every work in the beginning is difficult for you, but it's not impossible for you but you can start the life with this. So these are some three, four things we started talking to them. And we are slowly and steadily making things from the impossible to that I am possible. So it's a change of thought. It's a change and reverse your old thinking and say that God has given me the choice to choose and I can make my life better. And today we have models. Today we have children who have taken the ownership of their life and they are moving from the I am for impossible to the I am possible. So it's becoming a reality. It's not just like a thought or it's not just like a dream that this could happen. But we are seeing in reality that there are children who can do these things happen in their life. Right. So God gave you choices also. What inspired yes. you to work for the care of children and young adults living with HIV? How and why One did you thing. do it? Yes. Yeah. One thing was when I started my career, I started with education as my priority. Always I like to work in education because I always follow our Ambedkar sir. So he said education is empowerment. So I said, if, if I want to empower the people whom I work with, I need to focus on education. But during this course of my life, I came across the children living with HIV. I had an opportunity to work in a care center where we were caring for the parents and there were small kids. And I just felt that there is something very special in these kids, but the parents are not able to identify those things and actually create, give that space and opportunity. So I tried to explore in life many ways, many ways. In fact, I did a PhD. I actually managed HIV care state program, state coordinator, I was there managing HIV care program. But all these places, I always felt an urge within me that I need to choose where do I actually spend the last few years of my working days? Where do I want to actually do a full commitment? And I felt the best thing I can do is to work with these kids because they're very special kids. They are so lovingly and they care for you so much when you respond to them positively. And there are so many things that can be unheard in them. And that space we are trying with our with the Sneha Charitable Trust, with collaborators. Today, we have been able to collaborate with John Hopkins University. We have been able to collaborate with many other partners. We have collaborated with Teach for India, where all these children 
have stood out as a very strong children not as a weak not as somebody who will accept failure not as somebody who will say oh i got hiv i cannot do anything and sit idle they are children who are going to explore they are children who are seeking for opportunity and if we are able to create that positive spaces create that positive opportunities we will really have a bright and a full enlightened india because these children are going to make difference to many lives that they are going to touch very inspirational dr raj very inspirational and you know this time the theme of the international aids conference uh, it has really affected me it's intriguing re engage and follow the science yeah. so are we not following the science when it comes to care and control of hiv and other infectious diseases like covid 19 and you must have had a first hand brush with that we were be- dealing with so much of yeah. misinformation in the general public even around covid and uh, and hiv yes so um, uh, i would like you to share your experience on what needs to be done more about this because misinformation creates a lot of havoc and it leads yeah. to a lot of stigma which we saw even in covid 19 yeah certain certainly i i do agree that yes because there have been many things which we know that we can do it one thing which i always feel sad about is especially with the covid we knew that it could be prevented it could be the transmission could be reduced but still we failed to do that we we had the first wave in the second wave we really failed we took ourselves very lightly so there are many things that we go wrong in our life or the wrong in our the step we take but one thing i really feel that this time the reengaging and follow the signs also is very very up because in the country context like india where there are a lot of rural infections still there are some children who are born with hiv positive we know the ppdcd program is very strong we know what needs to be adopted what needs to be done and its pregnancy is nothing that we anybody can hide from people but still there are children who are born with can we make it zero that's a big challenge it's not only i don't say that it is government's responsibility it is ngos responsibility it is parents responsibility it is each one of us who are responsible for because we know what is the science we know how the transmission can be stopped we know that the children are born there are 95% of children who are born negative why don't this five children also be joined to that group that is where i feel sometimes i feel really very sad when i hear that this child after the third test she or he was tested positive we feel where did we go wrong actually we know everything but still we have gone wrong with it so these are something that are hurting but i feel that we have come a long way when it comes to hiv today people are living healthy despite being infected at a very engage we have listened to stories of our friends who though they were born hiv they have done so many things success in their life in a very early stage so certainly there can be many who can follow but one thing we need to build back in our each one of our life is the we should not stop believing in in trust and hope we should trust each other we should build our lives together and always there should be always a hope any youth any child anybody who walks into any place even in a small center even in a small shop who may be infected with hiv who may be infected with other disease he or she should be talked with hope and say no worry you come there is always a possibility there is a treatment there is a cure there is a space for you we are there with you you can come and we can certainly make differences in life that is what science teaches us things are very simple you follow the rules you are safe you can move forward with confidence and and uh, uh, with with hope also love and that is what your sneh sadan no. and the, the sneh gram is about sneh is love and i think that yes. is very important your your uh, message for the conference i think the conference is an opportunity of vibration of various thoughts but one thing is that opportunity i am seeking is whatever the thoughts is there it is going to be a reflection in all the way, places where we are working from because there are many people who are going to come 
who are working in the grassroots level to the top decision maker level. So it could be a very strong reflection. Whoever is attending or whoever is listening to this is going to take something that is very, very special message for each one of them. We need to carry it back, but we should not forget the roots we came from. We should take it back to the community who may or who may not have the opportunity till now to understand about HIV itself. There are many children still who don't know about HIV itself, why this infection has come. Parents have not disclosed to many children. That should not happen. Every child should know. Every child has the right to know what is the infection he or she has and the right to actually take the treatment with knowledge, not with hiddenness. So I think the uh, conference should take that message very strongly back that it has a right for you to know your health status. Today, you know about your health status, you know about report. Everything is very black and white. So why don't a child at the age of 20 know what is happening to him or her? I think that is very, very important. And knowing is not just that. The child can face it. The child has a lot of spaces for growing up healthy and live an happy and sustainable life. So that is what the message I think we need to take it back to the kids wherever we are working there. Thank you, Dr. Raj. Thank you, Doctor, very much. Okay. Thank you very much.